During a year nine mathematics class, I was able to observe a teacher effectively use ICT to flip the classroom and have her students engage with the introductory content on trigonometric ratios prior to the class. This prior engagement with the curriculum content allowed for the face-to-face -face time to be spent engaging initially in a teacher-led collaborative discussion where clarification on trigonometric concepts and their applications would be provided. During this discussion, the teacher made use of the smart whiteboard to highlight and elaborate on critical curriculum concepts. She then distributed a mini booklet on trigonometric ratios, which students were required to complete during the collaborative exercise. These booklets could be then used as personal learning aids through the process of developing procedural fluency. The remaining class time was spent applying this new content to a set of practice questions using the MathSpace ICT resource. The effective implementation of the flipped classroom pedagogical model facilitates meaningful student engagement because of its ability to reduce the intrinsic cognitive load on students in the classroom. The flipped classroom model also contributes to student engagement by allowing more opportunities for collaborative classroom learning experiences. The success of the flipped classroom model also highlights its ability to increase student engagement by satisfying the basic human need of autonomy and providing the students with opportunities to be the centre of the learning or discovery process. By eliminating the information transfer component of traditional pedagogy, the classroom becomes a place of collaboration where students benefit from a more socially arbitrated knowledge construction process. The teacher's use of the mini booklet as an additional learning resource allowed for the resulting collaborative learning experience to be easily directed. The collaborative learning environment which the flipped classroom facilitates allows for increased student-to-student -student as well as student-to-teacher interactions, which results in more opportunities for more knowledgeable students to pass on their understanding to others through their zone of proximal development. Prior to the immersive experience, my belief about the effective use of learning materials was informed by my own experiences as a student in an under-resourced rural public school in Western Australia. Through the lens of what Grace describes as a teacher-centred theory of learning, I viewed the pedagogical use of instructional resources as teaching aids whose role centred on the facilitation of direct instruction. The observation of the positive impact that a combination of instructional resources could have on in student engagement, particularly when used as part of a well-planned, student-centred learning experience, has given me cause to question the comparative efficacy of the traditional direct instructional model. The failure of direct instruction to consider the cognitive diversity among students only reinforces this belief. Witnessing the significant improvement in student engagement when instructional resources are used to facilitate student autonomy has ensured that the link between autonomy, self-determination and intrinsic motivation will inform my future pedagogical practice. And finally, in my opinion, the observed learning experience could be further developed to ensure that, in the selection of instructional resources, their ability to communicate the value of what is being learned is accounted for. Adherence to this selection criteria would, in my opinion, help satisfy questions of relevance which, if left unanswered, have the capacity to undermine student motivation and engagement. I was given the opportunity to observe a Year 7 Mathematics support class where its five students were provided with a differentiated learning experience that accounted for the students' individual context and cognitive readiness to engage in the curriculum material. The teacher was able to differentiate the manner in which the students engaged with the learning material by describing fractions using colloquial language such as top-heavy and weirdo. The teacher also directed students to engage with the learning material by taking notes in a multimodal format on paint sample cards. It was recommended to the students that the flashcards be used as prompts while they complete their practice problems involving fractions. For the duration of the class, the teacher presented as both caring and supportive, whilst managing classroom behaviour through a characteristically non-adversarial communication style. Although the teacher's use of colloquial language does help create a positive and therefore constructive learning environment, it also helps to remove any vocabulary-based obstacles which may hinder the learning process. The language used by the teacher creates a learning environment which students can all focus on developing procedural fluency in the sequence of steps required to complete the assigned mathematical task without the barrier that domain-specific language creates. The benefits of using colloquial language while students develop their familiarity with fractions and their use as a tool in the problem-solving process highlights the limited capacity of an individual's working memory. Fractions as a conceptual understanding involve complex interactions between a variety of schemas which are all required to be simultaneously mentally processed. The introduction of familiarity when describing abstract mathematical concepts aids in the acquisition of knowledge by allowing the learner to increase the germane cognitive load devoted to conceptualising the fraction by reducing the intrinsic cognitive load associated with the processing of the information itself. By freeing up working memory, the individual has a greater opportunity to assimilate the new knowledge without overburdening the student's cognitive systems.
The use of flashcards as a study technique is commonplace. However, their efficacy as an aid in the retrieval and application information is not clear. The teacher's decision to use flashcards as procedural cues to aid the student's development of procedural fluency not only increases the student's engagement by satisfying the basic human need of autonomy, but it also allows the student to develop their own connections between the mathematical concepts and their applications. The impact that both the immersive experience and the unit material have had on my understanding of the strategies teachers use to respond to the needs of all students has been profound. The experience has given me a newfound appreciation of the underlying complexities of cognitive processes that must be performed when constructive personal understandings of abstract concepts such as fractions. The in-school experience brought the idea that language could be a barrier to learning into sharp focus for me, which highlighted the importance of identifying a subject's core learning objectives when lesson planning. By identifying these core learning objectives, teachers can take steps to either alter their instructional design by presenting information in a multimodal format, or instructionally scaffold any learning obstacles which may overwhelm the cognitive capacity of some learners. The observation of a Year 8 mathematics class brought to mind the importance of developing classroom routines and procedures to support student engagement. The teacher began the class by making a list of topics which would be in next week's test. Throughout the class, the teacher maintained a calm and confident disposition and was rarely stationary during classroom discussions. Eye contact combined with a deliberate pause was used as a nonverbal cue to students whose discussion began to veer off topic. The teacher led a revision task that required the class, as a group, to think about the steps required to solve three different algebraic expressions of increasing complexity. The teacher would call on students asking, well, what do you want to do next? And so, you've chosen to take the 4x to the left-hand side. I like it. Explain to me why you did that. The careful organisation of a classroom's rules and procedures at the beginning of the school year resulted in a learning environment where students were able to engage in typical classroom activities with only minimal teacher direction. Establishing a routine supports students in two main ways. First, the teacher now has more time to devote to improving the student learning experience. Second, predictable classroom routines help reduce student anxiety levels and support their educational autonomy. The positive classroom environment observed during this class could be attributed in part to the teacher's confident demeanour as well as her effective application of an egalitarian, non-adversarial approach to classroom management. The combination of proximity, eye contact and the deliberate pause allowed the teacher to limit disruptive classroom behaviours without using coercion or explicitly controlling language, which can encroach on each student's sense of self-determination. When leading the class discussion, the teacher's dialogue places the student at the center of the learning activity whilst, through the question's framing, also portrays the learning experience as a quasi-cooperative exercise between the teacher and student. By placing the student at the center of the exercise, the teacher requires that the student take responsibility for their learning. The teacher's planned inclusion of the phrase, explain why you did that, transforms the question from simply checking procedural fluency into one designed to develop the student's metacognitive skills and deepen the learning experience. By placing the student at the center of a cooperative learning experience, the teacher is able to support student engagement by both highlighting the student's own autonomy in the classroom and, by focusing on metacognition, removing the risk of personal failure. Prior to the immersive experience, I underestimated the effect of even subtle changes in communication could have on the perception that individual students have about their relationship with the teacher and their interaction with the curriculum content. This experience has demonstrated that the use of a combination of verbal and nonverbal communication techniques that support student engagement must initially be thoughtfully planned and consciously implemented. I've also learned that becoming proficient in this component of professional practice is essential if I want to ensure that in my classroom disruptions are kept to a minimum while, as a teacher, I'm maximising the pedagogical use of class time. The immersive experience also highlighted the ability of teacher questioning to simultaneously establish expectations, promote personal accountability and develop metacognitive skills. This experience has reaffirmed my belief that integrating question sequences into the lesson planning process and critically reflecting on their impact is an essential component of the professional practice of an effective teacher.